rainy day. It's so good to see all of you here today. My name is Stephanie Seck. I'm director of Youth and Family Ministries here at Southern United Methodist Church. And on behalf of Pastor Lucas and myself, I'd like to welcome all of you to worship this morning. A very special welcome to any and all visitors that we have today. We hope that you find our service warm and welcoming. And if there's anything we can do to make your visit better, please make sure to see one of our ushers or myself. As you can tell, Pastor Lucas is not with us today. He is on um, base today, and he is also an army chaplain, and so um, our prayers are with him as he's working with soldiers today. It has come to that time in worship where we bring up any announcements that we have. So if you have an announcement that you would like to make for the week, if you'll please raise your hands, and we'll be sure to bring you a microphone. Are there any announcements? Yes, my friend Betty Johnson is here from Dallas again. Okay. <laughs> I know most of you have known her longer than I have. But I you like my background? She comes to Dallas like you. and stays all night. Oh. I mean, you know how the girls like to talk and be tonight. Welcome. We're glad to have you here with us today. Any other announcements? Yeah. Did you guys want? Well, it's Heritage Day's time on the 29th of September, and a lot of people have already offered help, which we appreciate, but we could use a little more, please, in volunteers and or snacks and food for hospitality room, volunteers to help with stations and so on. Um, doing it a little different with the older kids in the morning and the younger kids in the afternoon. Daycare is going to be invited in the afternoon, which I know is an app time, but that's the way that worked out with the school schedule. Uh, it should be little train rides for the little ones, and it should be uh, big wagon rides for the big kids in the morning. Let me know if anybody can help. Also, there's a parent meeting, a parent and gift meeting tonight for um, anyone interested in confirmation class. Confirmation class is open to 7th through 12th grade. Um, we'll be meeting on Sunday evenings, but tonight at 5.30, uh, you'll be meeting with Pastor Lucas and myself, and we'll be able to go over and answer any questions that you have. So if you know someone, um, please contact us, or um, come join us at 5.30. Zibby will be 8 next Saturday. Happy <laughs> birthday, Avery turned seven last Thursday. Happy birthday, Avery. Again, in spirit, if you'll please take a moment and greet those around you.
call to worship. Lead a life worthy of the calling to which you are called. We do not do this alone. We dare not try this alone. So we gather as God's people. Lead a life worthy of your calling, a life full of service and meekness. We come to build up Christ's body in humility and gentleness, with patience and love. Lead a life which reflects your calling, that life of peace grounded in the Spirit. We rejoice in our oneness with Christ. We would share the grace offered to us. Live a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called. We gather as God's family to worship, learn, and grow together.
today in our um, scriptures, we're going to be talking about love. And I was thinking, when I was thinking about those children's time, the song, Jesus Loves Little Children, popped in my head. Do you guys know that song? Jesus Loves the Little Children. So, one of our scriptures, Deuteronomy 6, 5, says, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. Another one says, Behold, children are a gift from the Lord. And did you know that all of us, not just you guys, all of us are children? We're all children of God. And when it says to love the Lord your God, it means not only love God, but love the children of God too. Love everybody. And then it says, I have another one, it says, I give you a new commandment, love one another, just as I have loved you. And then, my last one, says, my children, our love should not be just words and talk. So we don't just say, I just love you, I love you. It says, it must be true love, which means we have to show love with our actions. So, if you have a friend that's playing by themselves at the playground, you can show them love by going to play with them. You can show somebody love by saying, are you okay today? How do you feel? Yeah. <laughs> so, can you guys pray with me? Lord, thank you for the children, not only of age, but children are adult children of God. Thank you for teaching us how to love and showing us how to love and showing us that love is not only in words but in actions. Lord, help us to show our love, not only say our love. In your name we pray. to and fro, and blown about by every wind of doctrine, 
by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. The word of God for the people. My dad decided to change jobs. Up until that time, he worked out in the oil fields. And I spent most of my childhood not seeing my dad during the week. And I can still remember as a child when I knew my dad was going to be close to town, that we would load up at 10 or 11 o'clock at night. And my mom would make egg, fried egg sandwiches. I don't think I've had one of those since then. Um, but she would make fried egg sandwiches. We would pile in the back of the car, sleepy and in our pajamas, and we'd head out to the oil rigs where I'd watch my dad and um, how they would load it, and I would see how high the oil rigs were. I got kind of like an up-close and personal look at that. And then we would get close enough that we could see the oil down below. I'm not sure that you can get that close anymore or if that's even a good idea, but those are the memories I had. Then my dad decided to change jobs and he became a snap-on tools dealer and we went from living in Medicine Lodge, Kansas to Winfield briefly for a few months and then to Ark City, Kansas. I was in the sixth grade by the time we got to Ark City and those of you that are in junior high and high school can imagine what it's like. Some of you have, um, I'm looking at one in particular, but some of you know what it's like to go to a new school and to be the new person. It was a really rough time for me. My mom went from being a stay-at-home mom to a working mom, and suddenly I became a latchkey kid. I can remember I was in the sixth grade, so I felt that I was old enough that I didn't need anybody to take care of me, I was perfectly capable of getting off the bus with my sisters and watching them until my mom came home an hour or two later. But my mom, knowing that if she left the three of us to ourselves, that we'd probably end up fighting and pulling hair and making a mess of the house, she knew that she had to have a plan. So she had the neighbor keep an eye on us, but she also enlisted us in a program called Dial a Friend. Dial a Friend was a program for senior citizens in Ark City who were connected with younger children who were like me, a latchkey kid. They typically went to the Senior Citizen Center. Um, some of them le led very active lives. Others didn't leave their home much at all. It was an opportunity for two generations to come together. I needed her and she needed me. I didn't think I needed her, but she needed me. That's what I told myself as a sixth grader. 
So I remember um, we would get together and we'd meet at the community center once a month and we'd have ice cream and we'd get a chance to talk. And the first time that we sat down, you know, I kind of sat down as the typical sixth grader. I'm too cool for this. These are my sisters. They really need your help. So when you call the house, I'll just give it to them because I've got this. I don't need any help. Elizabeth Dial was 94 years old when she came into my life. 94 years old. She, I will never forget her. Um, I ended up meeting her through church and not only the Dial a Friend program, but she was 94 years old and she had the biggest smile on her face. And she could barely see. She couldn't see hardly at all. In fact, I remember her telling me that I was a beautiful child, and I turning to my mom, not being very quiet about saying, but how does she know if I'm beautiful? She can't even see me. <laughs> but Elizabeth had a heart of gold, and she knew that even in her older age, God had a mission for her. God had a purpose for her. Her life wasn't over. Retirement may have came, but her life still had a purpose, and she had a need. And the Dalla Friend program brought those two needs together. So every day we would get off the bus at 3.30 p.m., 4 by the time we got home probably. We'd get off the bus at 4 o'clock. We'd go in the house, and at 4.10 every single day, long enough to put our backpacks down and find our snacks, the phone would ring, and it would be Elizabeth. And every day, I would pick up the phone, and I would say hello, and she was like, hello, Stephanie, how was your day today? And I would say, fine. And she would say, that's not good enough. How was your day today? What did you do today? And at first, those conversations were quick and slow and typical sixth grade banter. But as the months went on, I would share with her, well, today wasn't a great day. Being the new kid is not fun. And I'm ready to move back. And my allotted five to 10 minutes that that phone call was supposed to be would turn into 30 minutes sometimes. And pretty soon I'd even forget to give the phone to my sisters so that they too could talk. The point is, is Elizabeth needed me, but I needed her just as much. In today's lesson in Joshua 13, 1 through 7, we hear that Josh is old and advanced in years. I did a little bit of research, and it's hard to tell. Some people say he was 100 years old during this time. Others say 98. But the purpose is, is that he was old. He has spent his entire life from young adulthood up until then serving God through war and helping um, to conquer land for him. He had traveled under Moses. Moses was his teacher. And together they advanced to the land to possess the land. And then, at 98 to 100 years old, just when you think maybe God's going to say, rest, take a break, God says, you are old and advanced in years, and very much of the land still remains to be possessed. This is a land that still remains. And Chrissy did an awesome job saying all of those places that none of us can probably repeat correctly. But, th but God had a purpose and a plan. Instead of saying, go rest, God said, go serve. And Joshua went, and Joshua served. There's many other examples in the Bible <clears throat> where people have been asked to serve beyond their typical 65 years of age. There's also many examples of people called to serve when they were much younger. For example, God used Abraham to build a kingdom. He used a young shepherd boy, David, to fell, to fell a giant. He used an older barren woman, Hannah, to bear and raise a prophet. He used a young girl, Mary, to bring Jesus, Son of God, into this world. In Exodus 7:7, 7, 7, Moses was 80 years old when he went to Pharaoh, and he was also 80 when he went to the burning bush. Aaron was 83 years old when he went with Moses to these places as well, to Pharaoh. In Joshua 1:6, 6, 
God says to, God says to Joshua, be strong and courageous. And he says this three times. In Joshua 1.9, he says, I hereby command you to be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So, what does my lesson on Joshua have to do with today? I bet you all can guess. In today's title, I say it takes a village. And it truly does take a village to raise a child and a family and a community. Today I'm asking you to think how God may be calling you in your life to be the light and to be the Elizabeth Dials in our world. Another interesting story about Elizabeth is that she was the one that made the communion bread. And as I mentioned, she's blind. But she did something special with that communion bread. Every month when she made that bread, she would put a smiley face on the loaves just for the children. And there was something about being a child and taking communion and being part of something so important and so sacred and seeing that smiley face and knowing that God had even chose us, the children, to partake in that bread. Today I'm asking you to think where God is calling you to serve. I stand before you today letting you know that there's a couple areas in our church that are desperate for help. And we need each and every one of you to continue what we have started here. I've thought long and hard, and I've talked to a couple different committees, and they asked me to stand here today and to tell the story of how The Rock got started. Over 12 years ago, more than 12 years ago, um, when we first moved here, Carter's 14 years old, so it was before I had Carter. When we first moved here, we didn't have any children, and we were new to town. And every day, and at that time we were kind of struggling to have children. At that time we weren't sure what was happening, but we weren't sure we'd ever have a family. Now look at our family. <laughs> God does answer. <clears throat> But I would sit on my porch every single day at 310, 315, and watch the kids go home. And secretly, I'm not going to lie, it was kind of a bittersweet thing. I was excited because I got a chance to see little kids. But I was also um, a little upset as I thought about how bad I wanted to be a mom and how Granted, they were just walking home, and I know that's just one portion of their life, but at the time, that was something I just really wanted in my life. And every day, they would walk by, by us, by our house, and they would um, say hello to us. Hello, I'm Annie, or I'm Elizabeth, and I would say hi. And then they would keep talking, or they would see that my dog was outside, and they'd come up the driveway, and I'd be like, oh, well, it's nice to meet you, but don't you think your mom and dad will want you to get home? And they would say, well, mom and dad aren't home yet. I'm going home by myself. Keep in mind, these were kids that were not fifth and sixth grade even. They were probably kindergarten and first grade. Kindergarten and first grade going home. Now first know that I make no judgment on the fact of how parenting styles are. I realize this is a small town. I realize some of us were raised that way. But in my head I was thinking, wow, they're kindergarten and first graders and they're going home. Second thing in my head was if I was a parent and my child was stopping to talk to people, I would be incredibly worried. It was during that time that we um, found Silver Lake United Methodist Church. We got involved. I ended up getting pregnant with Carter. But even back then, I thought, wow, look how close we are to the school. We have a high school across the street, and we have the elementary school down the thing. I need a drink of water, sorry. And I thought, here we are. Silver Lake United Methodist Church with a high school right there and an elementary school right down the corner. And this was way before I came a youth, became a youth director or helped the youth here. And so that thought kept happening and I kept talking to people and I learned that back in the day, Donna, you may have had something go, that you led something with kids way back when, before my time. 
and that there was something there, but there hadn't been anything since then. I kind of talked through to people, but nothing really happened. And then about three, almost four years ago, Julie Falk came to see me and said, I heard that you have this vision, and I have this vision too. What if we were to make it happen? And suddenly the vision, her vision was with younger children. My vision originally was to work with youth, to have the youth house, which we didn't even have a youth house at that time, but to have a place where youth could come and they could do their homework and they could do Bible studies and they could have game time and they could do all these things. So Julie and I um, went to the school and we met with the nurse and the counselor and the administration, the principal, superintendent, and we said... What can we do and how can we help? And through that, um, the ROCK program was born. We learned that after school, there are kids that are constantly walking back and forth. Um, that Some of them don't have practice that starts right away, so they walk down the Ferrazes or they go around town and then they come back. And they were looking for people that would be willing to maybe even hang out at the school if they didn't have a place at their church and to just be an adult there. They were looking for people willing to read a book to kids. There are many teachers, Lori would probably even say that, I think I've heard Lori say that before, that sometimes she's just looking for an adult that would be willing to sit down and let a child read to them, um, or to you, or vice versa. They were looking for people to show that they care. And so out of all that, as you all know, the rock grew. We started our first year with 14, I think, 14 or 15. And then our second year, um, we decided we were going to cut back because we didn't have um, everything that we felt like we needed. And God intervened, and God said to Julie and I, that's not good enough. At least that's how we interpreted. And last year, we had 34 kids. This year, I stand before you telling you that we have the funds in our account to go on, but we don't have the people to go on. And I'm standing here before you as a little girl who had a woman in her life that took time to say, you know what, I care about you. A little side thing nugget about me is growing up in junior high, I did not do well in school. I struggled, probably because I moved so much or I moved so fast in in between the fifth and sixth grade, but I struggled. And I can still remember even having a teacher tell me, and no, our teachers wouldn't ever do this, but I had a teacher tell me once that I probably wasn't going to go to college because I wasn't good enough for that, but she would at least try to get me through high school. And I got to tell you, I want so badly to find that teacher today and say, not only did I go to college, but I'm in seminary now. (laughs) But it's not just the work that I did to make that happen. It's the people in my life that cared and that came through, like Elizabeth. It's the teachers that showed me how much they cared and wanted me to succeed. It was the people at church that prayed for me and let me know that they were there for me and helped me with my homework. God is calling each of us into a lifetime service. And though I totally understand that we all need time for respite, We all need time to take care of our own souls. I also believe that God, just as he called Joshua, calls us to continue our ministry in some form. So today, maybe it's not helping with the rock every single week. But I do want to say that I'm hoping in the next week or two that we'll be able to make the rock happen. And I've had a few volunteers come forward. But I'm also coming to you today to tell you that I'm looking for something a little bit different. I'm looking for individuals that would be willing to spend one day a month, one day, one Wednesday a month, no more than two hours, probably an hour, that would be willing to spend time listening to them read their book, or maybe lead a book study, or maybe um, teach them a craft or woodworking, or sewing, or cooking, or the list goes on and on. I'm looking for male, I'm looking for female. It's not always, sometimes we like to categorize it, that it's all about us, that we need to be the woman to do these things. But I want to tell you about a little, uh, one of our kids in our rock program, and I won't tell you his name, 
But he's one of our honorary ones, I'm not going to lie. He's totally honorary. And he's, he's, I don't have favorites, but for some reason I'm drawn to those that are honorary. And, you know, we kind of, all through the year, he would listen. And the Bible stories were his favorite time, but he kind of struggled to sit still. And then during vacation Bible school, we hooked him up with Pastor Lucas. And he, I still remember on the last day, he was standing, or we were all back here, and the kids were up here getting ready to sing. And he goes, Pastor Lucas, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to stay right here. And Pastor Lucas says, okay, but I think it's kind of cool what they're doing. That's a pretty awesome song. Next thing you know, he looks up at Pastor Lucas and he looks at the kids. And by the end of the program, he was standing up here and he was doing all the actions and he was singing. I ran into him three times this summer. The first time I ran into him, he came up to me and he said, Stephanie, Miss Stephanie, Miss Stephanie, when is the rock going to happen? And I said, well, hopefully the rock will happen after school starts. And he says, okay. Not that I was going to go or anything. I don't plan on going. I just wanted to know when it happens. Second time, same thing. I'm walking around town. Miss Stephanie, Miss Stephanie, when is the rock happening? Okay. Yeah, I'm not really interested. I was just, I was just curious if any of my friends would do it. The third time, just a couple weeks ago. So, Stephanie, Stephanie, when is the rock happening? And I said, well, I'm hoping it'll start in October. I really hope that it continues. And he goes, yeah. Since you keep begging me to go and everything, I've been thinking, I think I'm going to go to The Rock. (laughs) I stand here before you to say that that little boy needs us in our church. But we also need him. Not to be a pew filler, filler, not to get him to be the next member of Silver Silver Lake United Methodist Church, but to grow together in Christ, to share our love of what God has called each of us to do, and to help one another as we continue on our journey as Christians and discipleship. So if the rock isn't your thing, please know that there are other options that we have and that we need you. Currently, we're looking for a preschool through first grade teacher. I want to say thank you to Ms. Thelma, who has agreed to be an assistant helper to that, and to my husband, Gerald, who has been filling in until we find a leader for that. But to be honest, we really could use your help there. And the third thing that I'd like you to prayerfully consider is pretty soon we're going to be starting a confirmation class. Confirmation is open to 7th through 12th graders. And if you have ever been a mentor, and I know we have some in this church, I invite you to talk to other people about it. Because it's not about us knowing everything there is about the Bible or knowing every single thing word for word or Bible verses. But we're looking for people that are willing to partner with a youth in our program and to teach them what they know, to share a little bit about their faith, whatever that faith is, and to meet with them and to hopefully continue through confirmation. The secondary goal that I have for that is that I would like to see an intergenerational mix of our youth and our children and our older people in this church. I would love to see, um, especially with confirmation, that when you start confirmation, you have this mentor that goes to confirmation with you. But by the time they graduate high school, you guys are standing up there with them and showing them um, that you care and that you love them. Today, I ask you to be strong and courageous, to think about ways that God is leading you both in your personal life and your life here within this church. And I will completely understand if this isn't your thing, but I do hope that you do hear the voice of God calling you, whether in this church or outside of these doors. You know, in our world, we hear so much about what's going wrong in our world and how it's a chaotic place and it's a dangerous place. What if instead of asking, what is wrong with our world today, we ask, where is God calling me to make the world a better place? You are loved by God and you are needed regardless of your age, occupation, or education. May you hear these words and know that God loves you and is calling you into a life of service. Amen. Will you please join in our hymn, The Servant Song, Faith Be Sing, 2222.
share our gifts um, to God, and it's in that spirit that the ushers please come forward for offering time.
And just say a prayer for my grandson, Tony. Thank you. As with you. Other others? Please be sure to take a, uh, take a look at the In Our Prayers page. And if you have any um, additions to that, please let us know. Will you please join us for the musical call to prayer?
from our children and youth, we thank you. To a, to a God that loves us and has grace for each of us to show us the way, we thank you. I hereby command you to be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you may go. May we take that assurance that wherever we go, God goes with us. Now take that light out to the world and let it shine. Amen.